Opposite and Drums, Belief, Let Music Burn, Opposite Part 2, Never Give Up. You're probably wondering, is the Blonde X Hawaiian Bad Boy Zac 300 worth it? I don't really know. You might love or hate my answer so much that you bash your computer screens. Just a few years ago, there was a curious little item that looked somewhat like the Bayer Dynamic Zalento in terms of chassis shape. I mean, let's be honest, the Zalento was a very iconic design. Anyways, that earphone was the Blonde BL03. And of course, we knew how that story went. The Blonde BL03 took the bottom of the barrel world by storm despite having some of its quirks and annoyances. I still have flashback on how terrible the stock cable was. Now today, we take a look at its alleged successor, done in collaboration with the Hawaiian bad boy, the Blonde Zac 300. Also, just some quick trivia, as pointed out by a viewer, Kopio Kaya, that the blonde is an anglicized word that came from the company's Chinese name, Baolong, which meant precious dragon. It kind of sounds like blonde and as such was chosen to be the name of the company in English. I did an unboxing last week. You're not missing out much as there really isn't too much to unbox. It basically was a box with a herpy derpy dragon on the front. Inside it, it has the same old kitschy text that I promise to shop every time I have to mention them. Belief, let music burn, opportunity part two, and never give up. Of course, you get the earphones themselves, a copper cable, and a clearly very budget bag with some literature that no one ever reads. Next, in terms of build quality, the Zac 300 has a metal chassis which is quite amazing for its price considered. Sometimes, I wonder how they motivate the folks at the sweatshop to produce these to be so cheap. The zinc alloy metal chassis is sandblasted and then anodized to this beautiful dark blue color and later has the dragon logo lasered on the front of the faceplate. Oh, just so you know, there are two colors to the blonde Zac 300. This is in matte blue and there is also a glossy gold one as well. If you are the type of person that has sweaty fingers, I suggest getting the dark blue one as they hide fingerprints better. For those of you who want to play fantasy and want to be a Nigerian prince, by all means, get the gold one. It is nice that Blonde uses metal for the chassis for superior resonant properties. The shape of the chassis isn't the most inspired or iconic like the original Blonde was, but they do fit well. Inside the chassis, it's a 10mm silicone dynamic driver. Silicone as a diaphragm material can possibly attenuate upper mid-range and treble to allow for a nice warm listen. Of course, this will be discussed in greater detail in just a bit. The Zac 300 featured a protruding two-pin design. The cable hands has an over-molded design to suit. Do not worry if you're using third-party cables as they will still work, it's just that they look a little strange. Cable provided here is a nice braided copper cable. It has a choker which is nice but it's kind of hard to use as the twist on the cable is a bit big and has a bit too much friction when you try to move it. And the cable just basically terminates to a 3.5mm termination as most people new to the hobby would have a female 3.5mm termination to match. Your tips provided on the Zac 300 are on the cheap side. These are things that I will change immediately. It is just thin and does not provide an excellent type of seal that I like. But I guess for the price, they need to cut some costs somewhere and the ear tips are the number one to go. In terms of fit, I have no issues with the fit on the Zac 300. I think they fit quite well as with most custom universal shape. And finally, coming to the juicy bit, when it comes to sound, the Zac 300 is a mount V. It has a very polite signature that would be very agreeable with most people. The Zac 300 is thick and large compared to some recently popular IEMs. For people who are always preferring a thicker tonal weight, I think the Zac 300 would be a good fit for you. This made me enjoy listening to male vocals as I love how it just renders them. There is an overall meatiness to the tone. In terms of bass, the Zac 300 knows bass. It is able to pump out satisfying levels of it. I will not say that these are bass head IEMs, but bass harmonics will influence more on the overall toner color of the Zac 300. Sub bass extension here is above decent and can be felt if your music has them. It is also very delightful. It is able to give a very strong sense of presence, almost club-like, you know, the mts mts, yeah, like that. 
mid base is no slouch either, but it tapers off a little bit from the sub base. I like that it tapers off as it adds a bit more definition to the mid range. However, with that said, it still offers a good kick with impact when your song calls for it. I do wish for better clarity when it comes to bass though. You feel much of the bass presented on the Zek 300, but it can be a little bit cleaner. Uh, however, I also know that these are really cheap, so it's kind of forgivable. Mid-range here takes a lot from the lower harmonics of the strong bass present on the Zach 300 as well. Male vocals have a great sense of presence as the supporting harmonics make them sound just so much more meatier. Texture and resolution here is also really good for the price class. A good point to consider is that if you're looking for a pair of cheap earphones that allows for a euphoric male vocal presentation, I think these are one to consider. Female vocals too also have a little more lower mid-range harmonics going on. They still sound dainty but with a bit more body, just less sprightly than usual. Clarity on the vocals is also pretty good despite the heavy-handed nature of bass. Instrument separation on the Zek 300 is okay. I find them good enough, but of course, there are better performers when it comes to this. Treble extension is average. Cymbals and crashes sizzle enough. They are not too in your face and harsh. It retreats quite quickly and never overstays its welcome. Treble is also very well balanced in relation to other frequency bands, but these are not the main focus of the Zek 300. It is present enough giving edge to the overall sound rather than the Zek 300 sounding too blunt. It allows for some air in the soundscape, albeit not super extensive. Now, we next talk about soundstage. When it comes to width and height, I must say that the Zek 300 does a good job when it comes to vertical and horizontal soundstage. It sounds characteristically large. When it comes to depth and positioning, depth is good too from the control of bass frequencies. Positioning is average as I feel that they can be a little more well-defined if they have a bit more presence in the treble. And of course, the review wouldn't mean much if I do not have comparison. So let me compare them with some of the more recent popular IMs such as the SimGod EW100Ps. Now this is another release from SimGod that competes directly with the Zek 300s. The EW100Ps are sonically quite different from the Zek 300s. By comparison, the Zek 300 is more meaty and bassier sounding than the SimGod. I like the SimGod for its more sprightly vocals and mid-range performance. This is as they emphasize the upper mids quite a bit more than the Zek 300. Which is better really depends on you. The blondes have a thicker, meatier presentation. Better for you if you enjoy bass. While the EW100P is slighter and more dainty, good for music that requires more finesse. But really, if you own the EW100Ps, the Zek 300s will be a very good complimentary iron for you to use as it does things the EW100P isn't really great at. Now versus the truth here, Hola. The Hola isn't the most exciting to listen to. It does not extend too much on the treble end, nor the bass end, resulting in a not so exciting listen. It is an extremely safe tuning that will suit almost anybody and anyone, but really a master of none. I found the Holas a little bit too rounded sounding as well. I like the dynamics on the Zek 300s better than the Holas. Versus the Tangzu Warner. Now the Warner has the weakest build quality amongst the cheapies, but it does sound good. It's a more exciting sounding hola with better treble extension. It does have a different DNA though, and it's more similar to the EW100P, which I personally prefer over the Warner. But if you already own the Warner, the Zek 300 will be a different flavor compared to the more low and warm dominant Zek 300. And finally, in conclusion, compared to its peers, the Blonde Zek 300 is a little warmer and more laid back, great for those of you who like music to be weightier and full. I think that these are great when you do not want to critically listen to music, but if you choose to critically listen, they can actually do a rather good job. But the important question is this, are the Zek 300 better than the original Blonde BL03? Will the successor beat the predecessor? I think there is still some magic when it comes to the Blonde BL03. There is some magic to the mid-range that is just also alluring, but I do admit that I think the Zek 300 is a hair superior when it comes to technicalities, but technicalities isn't everything when it comes to sound. Maybe it's just rose tinted glasses. Who knows? 
Anyways, with that said, thanks for watching the Super Chunk Super Audio Show. If you like the content so far, please kindly press the like and subscribe button somewhere right here down below. It will really help me out a bunch and it will buy kibbles for my dog. With that said, I hope to see you guys soon.